Well, welcome to my second video in the series of uh, how to use uh, com Minecraft computer craft uh, in a survival world as, as a tool to help you get uh, things done. Um, once you saw the first one you may have thought to yourself well this looks fun but uh, I'd love to have a go at this how do I set it up? So I'd just like to refer you back to the series I've already produced this is the series link on how to set up Minecraft as a portable app and, and that will show you how to set it up with Forge for Minecraft 1.12.2 and uh, show you how to install all the mods you need to run computer craft. So we'll get that one out of the way. Now the world that you saw me use in the first episode um, I've already set it up with some computers uh, and turtles so I'll show you the link to my GitHub page where you can download that particular world if you want to use it. This again will be in the description below and the file you want is uh, this one here, the computer craft tutorial world and that's the world that I am actually currently using. Uh, so it's got uh, a little shelter set up, uh, some turtles, a fish farm, some fishing rods, so everything to get you going on a survival world. You can use it either uh, as a, a server or you can use it uh, as a single player. Um, uh, there's a brief instruction inside uh, a text file in there so we'll get that one out the way and uh, we'll bring back uh, Minecraft into the uh, mix here let's just bring that over right so this is my uh, world there I'll just temporarily expand it a little bit I can't hit F11 because it will jump to my other screen and it'll disappear from here completely so we'll just escape from that so um, I want you to uh, foresee that you have just joined a survival world, you have um, not even this particular one, but that you've dug yourself a mine, you've got three diamonds, uh, you've got a few resources and you want to make a turtle. So I'm just briefly going to show you uh, how to do that. Um, in my inventory so far, those are the three diamonds that I've managed to mine. I've got one piece of redstone and I've got these other resources here. So what you need for the turtle is uh, smooth stone. Uh, we need glass panes, so they will be made from glass, and we need uh, iron uh, ingots. We need seven of these, so what I've done is to deliberately put uh, one cobblestone, one sand, and one iron ore to one side, so that we can just show you, I'm sure you know this is all pretty standard stuff. You've got furnace, I've put coal in it, so the first thing I want to do is to convert that cobblestone into smooth stone inside the furnace. I'll wait for this one to uh, go, then we'll drag that out. Good. So we've now got seven pieces of smooth stone. I'll add one more sand so that we have uh, uh, six pieces of glass. Drag that one out and finally one more piece of uh, iron to get to another iron ingot. I'll leave that to cook and uh, we'll go over to the crafting table and I've put deliberately just seven pieces of wood here because we need all the planks. So if I press the shift key and press that it will convert them all into oak planks. Uh, we need to use to create from here one chest standard recipe I'm sure you'll be very familiar with this uh, one crafting table there we go and we need some sticks or a stick I should say so nothing new there that's surplus to requirements so we can now go back to the furnace and hopefully yep our iron nugget is done so this is all we need to create uh, our turtle so we go back over to the crafting table. First thing to do is to make up a diamond pickaxe. There we go. Word of warning, do not use this diamond pickaxe at all for anything before you use it to make the turtle. It must be a completely undamaged axe. That's now surplus to requirements. Uh, we also need a glass sheet or those there glass pane I should say sorry so we'll take those away we only need one of those so we'll put that away that's needed so to make your turtle relatively simple 
you need the smooth stone one two three put them all the way around that that's our seven glass pane and a piece of redstone and that gives you a computer the computer now to turn that into a turtle this of course computer can be stood on the ground and used for static computer things uh, so that you can control gates and railway lines and whatever but it doesn't move around so what we're needing to do now is to make our moving computer also known as a turtle so computer in the middle iron all the way around it and a chest there we go we've now got a turtle so the turtle is basically a mobile computer uh, so it uh, is able to move around now on its own it's pretty useless uh, but if you combine with the computer the turtle you get a crafting table turtle and a diamond pickaxe you get a crafty mining turtle and that's what we're after and those are what are already in the chest so we've crafted our turtle let's go outside and use it now hardly a tree has grown here some might think I've deliberately planted a sapling but I'm not going to admit to that now you'll notice that there is no label no name over appearing over this turtle here was if you recall on the first video the forester and the farmer had a label it's very important to set this so right click now if you're in creative mode and you accidentally left click on here you will destroy this turtle so I usually in creative mode uh, arm myself with a sword in my uh, hand here so that if I accidentally hit with the left button it won't destroy it so right click and then we're going to set the name of this uh, turtle so use label spelt label L with an E L not as a lot of my students put an L A B L E label set I'm going to call this one tutorial as that's what we're using it for and we'll press enter so we've now set it and there we are the word tutorial now appears whenever I highlight the computer this has now made it uh, a permanent feature so if you're in creative mode and you now break that it won't disappear it sits on the ground you can pick it up and you can uh, there are from there make multiple copies of it by just placing the same one down again and again but as we're playing in survival uh, I can now break that if I had any weapons with me and uh, carry it around and move it but I've deliberately put it in front of a tree because I want to show you how we can program this turtle now uh, next step to do is I'm just going to uh, escape from that by pressing the uh, key there the, the forward slash key just to try and reduce the size of the Minecraft window here because I want to get into view that'll do for the time being uh, this is the save where this Minecraft is running this is not the normal app data users this is uh, one of the portable applications that I was showing you on before so this is in users public portable apps Minecraft portable 1122 Minecraft MCP data which is the port uh, pathway that I showed you on those first series of videos so we've got our Minecraft in here and inside here we've got our saves and there is the world here that we're playing on my computer craft tutorial now in there is a subfolder called computer and at the moment there is a six and a seven there uh, which are the ones that we were using uh, one of them is the farmer and one of them is the forester but this one hasn't got any obvious way of it showing something up so this is uh, the next step for you if I put that to one side we go back to our game and then right click again we have to create a file inside uh, the folder here to, to make this one appear in Windows Explorer so it doesn't matter what you call it but we might as well make it uh, the name of the file that we want to write so I want to write a, uh, a program that will fell this tree so why don't we call it fell tree now I've used what's called camel case here which is where you have a small letter to start the name and a capital letter in the middle which makes the hump which is why it's called camel case don't put a space in the name 
it won't work. You can use underscore, fill, underscore, tree. You can use all lowercase, all uppercase, your choice, but do not put a space in it. Hit the enter key. And that's now a text editor, which is where most of the tutorials that you will see on com uh, com computer craft and how to use it will work within this, but it's incredibly difficult and boring. So I don't do that. So I'm going to press the control key and then you've got the save already uh, highlighted, print the enter key that has now saved it. And magically over here, we've now got a button eight that's appeared with feltree.lua in it. So we can escape this now, or as you know, I'll leave that running and we'll move that to one side and we can now work externally in Windows on our program. There it is. Now, if you've not got Notepad++ or Atom or a proper text editor installed, do so because I can now right click on there, edit with Notepad++ and it's all ready to go. I'll just reduce the size of this window so that it fits in here. That'll do nicely. Uh, and so now we can start to write a program. Now, before we go back to that, <coughs> excuse me, I just want to show you a couple of things in Minecraft itself. Um, you can run Lua in, which is the language you're going to be learning, directly inside the uh, turtle here. So if I just type Lua in small letters, enter, Oops, of course I'm still in the, um, let's just exit that. Right, so we're, we've exited our program that we were editing. We're now back into the um, the interface for the computer here. So if I type in Lua, press enter, we're now got the interactive Lua prompt. So you're saying, well, what exactly does that mean? If I um, just escape this for a moment, you'll see that the turtle is facing the tree and we've got its crafting table here and on the other side we've got the uh, axe so if i was to type in turtle you'll see it does start to auto complete press the tab key uh, attack of course alphabetically is the first i don't want to attack the tree but i would like to turn the turtle so if i do tu R, then it automatically comes up with turn left, press the tab key, close the brackets there. That will now turn the turtle left. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do this and escape from this quick enough to, for you to see it, but I will try. So I'm just going to press the enter key and immediately press the escape key. There we go. We just caught it. You saw that the turtle turned to the left. So you've now carried out a simple command. Now, uh, Following on from that, we want to turn the turtle back towards the tree. So this would be turn right. Make sure I've spelt that right. Yes, that's correct. True. Now, the thing I wanted you to notice is that with all of the commands that we carry out here, there is what's called a return value. We're just stating turtle turn left or turtle turn right. It always supplies us with a true or a false. Let me just try one more thing just to show this up. If I got turtle dot forward, which kind of makes sense if we want to move the turtle forward, it says false movement obstructed. So this is kind of handy because when you're programming this thing, you can find out whether the instruction you've just given it, turn right, turn left, forward, works or not because it will return either true or false. Uh, the movement obstructed thing here will only work in the um, Lua shell as it's called where you're deliberately typing in. If you write a script for it you will not get that word movement obstructed. It'll just be false is all you'll get. Um, but that's quite uh, useful. One other command I wanted to show you at this stage is turtle.detect and true. So it's detected the fact that in front of us we've got a tree. It can only detect in three directions, that is forwards, up and down. So I'm going to do a turtle dot detect up. Again it's camel cased. As there's nothing above the turtle this should come out with false. False and nil. 
so that's fine it's returned the false and it's detected nothing if we now do the same for the final looking down turtle dot detect I'll get rid of that down true it hasn't told us what it's detected but it has found something below us so that's that's good enough to get us uh, ourselves programming so I'll just escape from that now there's a whole bunch of commands that can be used for uh, turtles and I'll put a link in the description to what's called the turtle API which is the list of commands I don't want to show you it here because there, there's quite a lot of them and it can look a bit overwhelming but so, so I'm just going to right click on that move it out to the way here and we're now going to start writing um, a, a script to basically to fell this tree um, so so far we've learned that we can turn left turn right and detect things up down or in front of us the turtle has no fuel in it so if I put this back um, and I was to type in and the tree wasn't there and it said <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and I said uh, turtle dot forward it would say false no fuel um, we can actually test that by uh, digging the branch and getting it or digging the log and getting it out of the way so if I put turtle dot dig there we are what it's done is it's dug the bottom tree and it's put the log in the bottom here if I try that turtle dot forward again now when you're working in this um, interface here you can use the up and down arrow keys to go back and forward to see what you've already done so there's no need to type the whole thing in again if you've used a few commands so I'm now going to test to see if we can move this turtle forward false out of fuel so that that's the problem we've got no fuel so we've got a, a little challenge now I'm going to put that back in there and go around and replant that log under the tree so we're back to the starting place so our challenge is this we want to cut this tree down and cut the whole thing down and at the same time if possible to strip any saplings that we might find in the leaves here we know that we can't move because we've got no fuel now um, turtles can be fueled by anything that will burn in a furnace so logs will burn planks will burn sticks coal charcoal buckets of lava there's probably a few odds and ends that will also work and each of them has a different um, capacity of how much fuel it carries so a bucket of lava will give you a thousand fuel units coal I think gives you 80 um, planks and logs I can't remember offhand it's probably about 16 uh, but one thing that is quite useful to know is that the, the amount of fuel you'll get from one log is exactly the same as you get from one planks so if for example if I've still got my planks with me yep there we go if I put a planks in there and I type in to find out how much fuel we've got which is turtle get fuel level it should say zero exactly we will now command it to actually refuel turtle.refuel because I haven't put a number inside these brackets it will refuel everything in the currently selected slot you'll see this slot here has a thicker board around it so that's the selected slot uh, so it will refuel using that uh, plank of logs so if I hit the uh, enter key there that has now gone it's been consumed and if I go back to the get fuel level 15 so it's, there we are it's 15 units of fuel from one planks and it's also 15 units for fuel from one log so you say well so what well the point is that if you wanted to maximize the amount of fuel you can get then if you break a log and then craft it into uh, planks you're obviously going to get a lot more out of it so bear that in mind and we're now going to try and run a program if I just escape that that will break the bottom log craft it into planks so that you get more 
refuel using those planks, then move forward and then go up the tree, breaking the log above, rotating round the tree to get the leaves, break the next one, rotate round, and so on, until it reaches the top of the tree, and then come all the way down. So that's our programming challenge. So again, just get that out of the way. So it's much easier to do this in uh, a text editor. So we already know the first move is to uh, break the tree. So turtle.dig and that will break the tree. Uh, the second thing we need to do is to craft those uh, that, that um, log into planks. It's got a built-in craft method turtle.craft and then turtle dot refuel. Now make sure you spell refuel correctly again. Some of, some of my students do put le rather than el, so it's refuel, not refuel as you think it sounds. Dig, craft, and refuel. And that will um, fuel it ready to start moving, but it won't actually move it. Now um, we can do that with a turtle dot forward. I've spelt that correctly now, turtle.forward. And then we're ready to start cutting the tree down. Now, um, most tutorials that you see on using computer craft would, you would create this little script, save it, run it, and it'll work. I have, there's no problem with that, that's great. Um, but right from the start when I'm teaching any programming language, Python, Lua, C Sharp, whatever, I like to use what's called functional programming. So this uh, is a simple script that is run, a Lua is what's called an interpreted language. That is that the when it's running, each line of your script is read and the instructions are carried out one by one in the order that you see them here. Um, but it's more useful to have uh, what's called functional programming where we make a couple of changes and I do this right from the start, right from the very beginning when I teach primary school kids. We do functional programming from the beginning. So what we're going to do here is to write this keyword which is function and you can see it's coming out in blue and we're going to call it main. Now the reason for this is that other languages like C Sharp and Java always have a main function and it's that main function that the program runs from. So there we are, we've now created a function. It does exactly the same thing, but if I was to run this now, in fact we can, I'm going to save that by hitting the blue button up here. So felltree.lua is now saved and we'll bring the interface in. we we'll just escape that. I'm going to exit from the Lua command prompt here. Exit, enter. I can clear the terminal. There we go, we're all ready to go again. If I type ls, we can list what's inside it. And there we've got the ROM, don't worry about that. That's part of the operating system and felltree.lua. I can even edit felltree.lua and we'll see the lines that I've just created. So that we're we could have worked on them directly in here, but it's far easier to work on them in an external text editor. So again, I will just compress control to escape from that. So I'm going to run this by typing the name of the script, which is fell tree. Don't worry about the dot lower. This will work perfectly and nothing will happen. There we are. The reason being is because if I just uh, go back to the script here, We've created a function main, but we haven't called it. We haven't asked for it to be run. So in an, inter an, in an interpreted language like Python or Lua, if you have a function, it will not run until it's specifically asked to do so. The, so the interpreter comes along and it comes up here and it starts here and it says, oh, I've got a function, it's called main, right. I'll stick that lot in memory and when I'm asked to use it, I'll use it, right, pass that. Oh, that's it, end of program. And that's exactly what happened. So we can fix that now very simply 
by just making the program run by asking it to run the main function. If I was to now save and run that, it would do exactly this. It would dig, craft, refuel and move forward. But I want to um, continue with the programming of, of cutting this turtle before we run it so that we build up to it and then run it all at the end. So our next stage after we've uh, moved forward is that we want to go, if I get back onto this and we escape from that. <clears throat> so we want to be able, we've broken the, the uh, bottom one, we've turned it into planks, we've refueled with it and we've moved forward so we're sitting underneath it here. So how do we move up the tree? Um, well obviously we can use turtle.digup and that would dig this branch here. Uh, we could then use turtle.up which will move the turtle upwards, the same as turtle.forward moves it forwards. You can go forward, up or down, those are the three movement commands. Um, but we also, if you remember, wanted to rotate it as we go up. So let's work on those for a moment. we we'll come back to our text here. So we're now in a forward position. We now want to start going up the tree. Now I'm going to put in what's called a comment here. So you put two hyphens and this will allow you to write something which the program ignores, but it allows you as the programmer to see what you're doing. So I now want to put in is to put move up and cut the tree. It's just a comment to remind you what's doing here. So we could now put um, turtle dot dig up. That'll work. And then we want to do turtle dot up. That will also work. So you think, well, that's great. What we could do then is just to repeat those lines. If I control C and bang them in again, control V. That'll do it twice. Dig up, up, dig up, up. Brilliant. The trouble is we don't know how tall the tree is and it's very repetitive. Now any kind of any situation you get in code where you're repeating things, you're doing it wrong. You need to do something else to repeat those loops automatically for you, re repeat those lines automatically for you. And that is what's called a loop. So I'm going to delete those two here. There are two basic types of loop. There is one that will run until some condition is met or not met, and then the loop will stop, which is called a while loop. So that's the one that we'll use now. So what we're going to say is while, if you remember, we use the detect up. So while turtle dot detect up. Now if you remember, the detect up gave a true or a false result depending on whether there was something to detect up. When we first do this it's going to um, say yes there is something up there, I've detected something therefore we want to dig it up and then move up. Um, what we're testing is whether or not detect up is true. Um, to type this out fully I'm going to put that and then we're going to do. So Lua has this do and end on all of its loops, if statements, functions and so on. And then we just tab those in to make it clearer that this is our loop. So what this does is to say while I can detect something above me, while it's true, I can actually remove those lines. That implicitly means while detect up is true. The reason for the double equals there is that you're using the equals to say not this is equal to, but is this equal to? We're asking, is this true? Is the detecting up true? So you need the double equals. If you mistakenly put a one equals, you'll get an error when you run it. So what we're saying is while the turtle detects up, then we're going to dig up and then move up. And then that will run again and again and again until detect up is false. In other words, we've reached the top of the tree. When we've reached the top of the tree, that loop will end and it'll move on to some program down here. So 
we we know that once we've reached this point here, we'll put a comment again. Reached tree top. We don't want to go back down again to the ground. Otherwise, if it's a tall tree, it's going to be stuck miles out of our way, and we have to stand on blocks of sand or dirt just to go up and reach it and knock the turtle out. So we can use something very similar to go down. There's a couple of ways of doing this. We could put while not let's find the uh, turtle detect down do so what we're saying here is detect down will either give a true or a false so if there is nothing below us turtle detect down will produce um, uh, a false one so just so that we don't confuse people that is an alternative way of doing it just to kind of make it fit in with what we're doing already is we're going to put that so while turtle detect down equals false in other words there's nothing to detect down that might be a bit clearer but the way I just showed you with the while not turtle detect down works exactly the same way. This is Boolean logic, which does take a little bit of understanding, but we will leave that for the moment. And we're going to end that loop. And then of course, while we're not de detecting anything down, we want to move the turtle down. So again, I can copy that, paste it in, and we'll change the up to down. So let's get that all nice and tidy there so just to go through this again we've dug the bottom of the tree crafted it to um, planks refueled with the planks move forward underneath the tree now while we're detecting the tree above us we're going to dig it up and move up until we reach the top and then while we're not detecting anything down we're going to go downwards and of course as soon as we hit the ground then we'll stop uh, another way you could have done this is we could have just simply put this. I'm going to type it out just as so you can use it as a comparison, but which one you use is perfectly okay. Then you can just put while turtle dot down do end. Now that's a much shorter. Uh, statement it does exactly the same as this so how does it work if you remember turtle dot up turtle dot forward gives a true or a false value so when it first goes down it will return a true so the first time it moves it'll go down once and true will be returned and it'll keep doing that until it hits the ground when it hits the ground it won't go down anymore so it'll return false then that loop will be finished. So I'm just putting that in as an alternative. It's shorter, but it's slightly more difficult to understand. I think this one is perhaps for those of you who are beginning with coding, this one makes kind of more sense, but I'll leave that where it is. So that's almost ready to go, except for one thing. We haven't yet got the idea of it turning around and cutting the tree. Now this is why I wanted to make this a functional program. So if I just shorten that we're now going to create a new function just add a couple of spaces here and let's call this one uh, I don't know get leaves that'll do it doesn't matter what you call it no not get leaves let's call it get saplings because that's what we're trying to find isn't it so get saplings end right so there's our function it doesn't do anything at the moment but what we want to do this is to run this function every time we move up the tree so that it will turn around and check for saplings so basically what we want to do in this side is to dig forward so we'll go turtle dot dig and that will dig in front of us and then we want to turn either left or right it's entirely up to you Uh, so turtle dot, let's turn right, doesn't really matter. Turn 
right. Now, that will only do that once. So again, we could copy that, which I'll do now, and we could paste it in, and we could paste that in four times so that it moves 90 degrees each time. It'll go around four times and do it. But again, I don't want to repeat myself, but we're using now a different type of loop. We're not gonna use a while loop, which checks whether something is true or not. We know how many times we've got to turn around. It's a fixed number. So it would be kind of repeat four times do the following. Now repeat is a genuine uh, word that you can use in Lua but it's not quite working as you'd expect there. I won't explain that at the moment. We're going to use what's called a for loop. I'm going to type it all out then I'll explain how it works. So for i equals one for one do and then we're going to do all that and then end. And now I like to always tab in by pressing the tab key inside a function, inside a loop, inside an if statement which we haven't yet done here, uh, to tab them in so that we know that those are separate little sections of code. It makes it look neater. It doesn't affect the running of it at all. Unlike Python where you put something in the wrong place and the whole thing crashes out. Lua is far more sensible because it uses the end statement to end a function, to end a loop, to end an if statement. So it's almost exactly like pseudocode. So how does this work? Now um, you may or may not know something about programming. There's things called variables. Variables are just locations in memory that you give a label to and then you store some information. So I'm making a uh, a memory location available which I'm calling i. I call it i because it's short for index. Let's make it full. So for index equals 1. So we're first of all creating our variable index and we're giving it the value of 1. The second one is how far this loop should run and we want it to run four times so it runs until it reaches four times. The third one is optional. That's how many steps you want to go up in. Just to simplify this, I'm going to remove that for now. So we're just going to say when the index is one, starts up at one, and when it reaches four, we end the loop. Now automatically, when the loop runs and it comes back again, index will have been increased uh, without you knowing about it. So the index will start off at one, then it'll be two, then three, finally four, and then that's it, the loop has finished. So what this does is it makes the turtle dig and then turns it right. And it does that four times in a row. In other words, it will rotate entirely around the tree. So we've now created this function and very conveniently, we can now put that up. So we'll dig up, turtle up, and we're now gonna call this function that we have just created. Let's just move that out of the way. So we've got, um, a bit more space here. So we're now going to call get saplings. So the easiest way to do that is control copy, control V. That's it. We should be able to run this uh, and see how it works. So I'm going to save it and I'll come back to it in a second just to run through it again to see how it works. So if I now escape from here, I'll make this now a little bit bigger. Uh, screen so we can see it more closely. There we go. Escape for again. Right, so we're now going to type in our um, fell tree. Now if I've not made any mistakes this should start running. If I've made some sort of error it will tell me about it. So I'll hit the escape, uh, escape key as soon as I've hit the enter on the hope that I've got this in uh, accurately. Yes there we go. It's moved in, it's going round and it's digging the tree. I'll just stand under it so we can see it will of course dig any leaves that it spots above it because it will have detected it. Right, that's done its job and it's landed. Uh, with that, that's it, it's done its job and we've got five 
logs and a sapling. So that's basically our uh, first program. So we'll just escape. Uh, no, sorry, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to yeah, put that back there and we'll get the uh, notepad black in. So I'm just going to run through this again and then that will be the end of today's video. So what we've done here is we've equiv done the equivalent of what is taught in later part of GCSE computer science, normally in Python. We've used functions, we've used a main function, we've used a while loop, and we've used a for loop. So we've really done some serious stuff. The fact that we're using turtle.dig, turtle.craft, and so on, means that we are using object oriented programming. So these, the turtle is an object and it has various methods that it's running. So we really have done some pretty serious stuff in just one go. I'm just going to run through it again to make sure you understand how it works. So functions are ignored by the interpreter when it's first loaded in. It just puts them in memory somewhere and says, OK, I'll use those when I need it. So the first line that actually runs is this one here main. It then jumps to this line where main is and it runs the following commands. It digs the block, crafts it, refuels with it, moves forward. Then it runs this loop which is while it's detecting up either a log or a leaves above it, it will then dig up and move up. It then runs this other function that we wrote up here inside this while loop. So you, we could have actually written all of this and placed it inside here. But I wanted to show you how useful functions are, because if this didn't work properly, we only need to change it here once and it's done for any other time we want to use it. So we're getting the saplings and then once it's reached the top of the tree, uh, it will then, while the detecting down is false, in other words, while there's nothing below it, it goes down and that's it. So what we'll do on our next video is to uh, improve this even further to perhaps make it so that if some saplings have been collected, uh, that it plants them. Uh, the other thing we could consider is, as you saw, I had to hit the escape key pretty quickly in order to uh, get it uh, out of the way to allow you to see it operating. So again, we can introduce a delay so that it doesn't start immediately. So look forward to the next episode with you.